Welcome back for another video. Today I'm walking backwards to the Hot Wheels room. A little bit of a journey to get through to this room now with all the cars I have on the walls and walking backwards. So anyways, today's video, the 1983 Hot Wheels review video. Every single 1983 Hot Wheels ever produced. I'm going to take them all off the Plano case display wall. There's about six or seven cases here and a lot of cars were released in 1983 so this is going to be a good one you're going to want to sit down with a, a drink of some kind perhaps and we're going to look at all these a little bit of pricing some information on some of the very rare variations in here and there are a lot to go over this took me almost 10 years to complete just this one year of cars and I have almost every single one really nothing missing so Everything from the extremely hard to find Speed Machines series. Every single car there and some variations you probably didn't even know existed. Some of these cars cost hundreds of dollars. And we've got the Extras. This was a cool new lineup of vehicles that was introduced for 83. We'll talk about those some more as well. And the High Rakers, another carry over from the year prior but some new models and some very interesting variations in there worth noting the Bronco 4x4 pack or 4x4 off-road pack something like that four vehicles in that set several variations again to make note of the 15th anniversary for Hot Wheels Mattel released the three pack belt buckle anniversary set and we've got some interesting rare cars, Canadian release. A Mustang from I don't know where, but it is extremely rare. And I have two examples, so I know it's not just a, a random one-off. We've got the Real Riders, complete collection. Very rare variations in here as well. Some of these cars worth upwards of two to $300 per car. Everything here is in pristine mint condition. It has taken a long time to put this collection together as you see it. And we've got the workhorses, some of the big old favorites that you may remember growing up with and playing with. Maybe you've passed them on to your kids now, who knows. They don't make them like they used to. Some of these things weigh as much of us as a stone. Pardon my stuttering, I've just got a lot of information in my brain right now to uh, regurgitate here for you. But we'll uh, make sense of it as we go through. Ah, uh, where are we? I took my little 83 sticker out. 83 starts right here. So we're going to look at all these. These are the mainline cars. More variations, of course, to look at. Lots of cool new castings released for 83. And also, at the end of the video, we're going to look at some of the interesting internationally released vehicles. Some of these were released in France, Mexico, Italy. Canada. Extremely rare pieces in there as well. 1983 cars. Pretty cool to me. I was born in 83 and I grew up playing with a lot of castings just like the ones here on the table. We're going to start this video off with looking at the workhorses because I know a lot of people like trucks. And although these are part of the mainline series, there are several series in the mainline including speed machines, workhorses, classics, all that stuff. But anyways, I'm not going to talk too much about the packaging for this video. This is a loose Hot Wheels collection. It's the easiest way to find these vehicles if you're trying to add them to your collection without spending an absolute fortune. First off, let's take a look at the Kool-Aid truck. Oh, or sorry, Mountain Dew. I don't know why I said Kool-Aid. Give me a Dew. It's got opening doors on the back of the plastic box. Nice big solid casting. I believe that's a Ford truck. One of those will set you back about $15 to $20 nowadays. And when I give my pricing in this video, that's for loose pricing only. And near mint condition. So if you have chipped up ones, you have to adjust the price based on the condition, of course. Next, we've got Steve's 24-hour towing truck. I believe that is also a Ford. Pretty cool. Some good scale action right there. And what do we have here? It's a big old Peterbilt, I believe. The Road or Thunder Roller, I think it's called. Thunder Roller. There it is on the base. 
those are getting pretty expensive. They're a very heavy casting, solid die cast basically other than the base. An interesting variation here, you may be wondering why I have two of them on the table. You can see that the one on the right has smoke tinted windows, the one on the left has clear windows. So there were two variations in 1983. And this casting will be released again later in, I believe, 1989. The change that can be most noted is that on the top, instead of having a smooth roof, it will have ribbed roof above the sleeper. So you can look out for that. And finally, we've got this beautiful truck. I think that might also be a Peterbilt. I'm not really quite sure. And I forget what it's called. The Long Shot. Nice that Hot Wheels put the names on some of these vehicles back in the day. They don't do that anymore all that often. But two cool paint jobs here. The white one was released in a single pack. And now we'll just move right on into the 15th anniversary belt buckle 3 pack, which featured one of the first Hot Ones cars for this year. But we've got another long shot here with the same tampa work and yellow paint. This one is quite expensive worth about thirty to forty dollars this one here is worth about twenty five to thirty dollars if you buy the whole set of course in the box you might get a bit of savings for each car overall but then again sometimes having all that in a nice packaging can make it worth a tremendous amount if the right collectors online we've got the sixty seven chevy camaro opening hood that one's a pricey little piece as well. Everyone likes that 67 Camaro to collect. So probably worth about $20 to $30. And the cheap one in the set, relatively speaking, would be the Porsche 928 with the hot ones. Smoked window, no interior on this car. That one's worth about $5 or $10. 83 marks the return of the Cadillac Seville. One of my favorite castings of all time. This is the mainline common version in gold metallic paint. Previous years it was silver with a burgundy side tampo just like this one has. This one here however only released to the Canadian market in a 3-pack exclusive. I don't know what the other cars in the 3-pack would have been but I'm guessing that probably the 928 would have been one of them and the other would just be a random mainline filler car. The regular Cadillac's worth about $5, $10. This one here can run you about $50 to $100 if you should be so lucky to find one. I've only ever seen two. I've got another one, but it's really beat up. And then the Turbo Mustangs. A shout out to Eli for hooking me up with this extremely rare metallic red painted Mustang with the blue Cobra on the hood and blue stripe in the side tampo. The common version of this one here in the main line featured also gold Hot One wheels just like this one has. Red metallic paint but the yellow Cobra, no blue in the side tampo. I for years have been looking for this car. I have another one that uh, with the tampos nearly missing on it but just identifiable enough to see that it had blue and uh, so very happy to add that to my collection. Really kind of a priceless car for me actually. I don't know what it would be worth and probably you know, people that have them wouldn't even really know because it is such a rare car what it is. I have a feeling it came from a race track set or something else, but there's no way to be sure. No information. Moving along to this nice collection of 4x4 vehicles. I've misplaced my packaging, but it's somewhere safely stored. And obviously I bought this one new in the packaging. The Off-Road 4x4 Gift Pack. In this pack came a Baja Bug with basic black wall wheels. Actually quite a rare vehicle to find because it was never released in any of the main lines with those. More commonly found with real riders in 1984 actually. Same true for this Bronco 4x4 with white plastic back cap and chrome motorcycle on the back. Another tough vehicle to find with the basic wheels. Each of those two vehicles worth anywhere between $20 and $30 a vehicle. Common vehicles in this four pack were the Byway Man, based on a Ford pickup truck, and the Jeep CJ7. My pack came with a Byway Man featuring the Toolbox variation, 
but it also was released without toolboxes in the pickup bed. The Jeep CJ7 that I received in that package featured tan interior and a clear window. Other variations released in the main line and possibly might have been seen in that packaging would be these two. Black interior, one with a white rimmed window and one with a basic window. These are all pretty easy to find, however the tan interior version is the most common. High rakers were introduced to the Hot Wheels lineup back in 1980 and in 1983, there's another new assortment of vehicles. We've got the Dodge D50 here. And if you're unfamiliar with what a high raker is, it just means that the back axle is adjustable. You can drop it down so that the vehicle sits up high at the rear with three different settings. I have all mine in the flat setting right now so that they look like normal street vehicles. We also have the 63 split window Corvette. The 40s Woody and the three window 34 based on a Ford Roadster. So all these vehicles pretty common, pretty easy to get, worth about five to fifteen dollars a vehicle in this condition. What is interesting here is this very rare variation once again. The common version has yellow tampos and a black sunroof. This version has white tampos and a black sunroof yellow tinted windows versus clear windows. When I first got my hands on one of these cars randomly in a bulk chipped played with lot I thought it had just suffered sun damage maybe discoloring the windows and fading the yellow paint but I always kept my eye out for another version like this lo and behold I confirm my beliefs that this was in fact a rare variation after all with this mint example priceless in my opinion. Next we're going to look at the Extras series. I don't have any package to show you but these vehicles came with an extra part not necessarily removable just something moving uh, kind of a feature. We've got the Sunagon here based on a Volkswagen van. Quite an expensive piece due to Volkswagen nostalgia and that one is worth probably around $40 Next we've got the upfront 924, a Porsche, with a nice little addition of skis and ski poles on the back window. This one has unfortunately had its taillights painted. That would be a custom extra. That one's worth about $15. Another pricey one here is, oh what's it called, the Hightail Hauler, 56 Hightail Hauler. Under this white removable cap are the two motorcycles you would see from the previous releases. This is a very common vehicle but with this cap that makes it worth about $35. Quite hard to find. And we've got the 31 Doozy. Both of these have a removable plastic roof piece. The rare one has red plastic fenders. The common one has the burgundy fenders. The red one is worth about five times what the burgundy fender one is placing at about fifty dollars. And the old Peterbilt dump truck with an actual functioning dump bed. This is a cool piece and the, the dump part can be removed but I don't see why anyone would want to do that. Worth probably around twenty dollars. Then we've got this truck, the steak bed truck I believe. I'll have to confirm that. Steve's, or no, Sunset Trucking on the side with a little sunset and obviously the tilting stake portion. One of the best marketing things that Mattel did in 1983 was the creation of the Real Riders lineup of vehicles. These vehicles are still hot sellers today in their own regards, mostly to collectors due to the price of these vehicles now. Typically nowadays they're about five dollars for a new version. These ones back in the day were also pricier than the main line but featured the two-piece real rider wheel as we're familiar with they were all either Goodyear well they're all Goodyear back then but they either came with a white hub or a gray hub and that often dictates the price for these collectible vintage vehicles even when there are two vehicles the same otherwise so we'll start out this lineup with the three window 34 
Very nice piece. This one has the yellow paint tampo. Not sure if that one would ever have a white one. I've never seen one, so for me, I will assume that it does not exist. The 40, 40s Ford two-door. Pretty common vehicle. Both worth about the same price in this case, depending regardless of the gray or white hub wheels. All metal casting. The 40s, for, um, 40s Woody. I believe this one is a high raker. It is indeed. So they just changed the, the vehicle with the real riders from the high raker collection. 57 T-Bird. The white one is slightly harder to find in this case. Placing it at around $25 versus $15 for the gray hub version. And we're just going in alphabetical order here. The Baja Breaker. Nice big heavy van with an opening plastic hood. And if I don't say a price for all of them, just assume they're worth around $20. I'm going to only make notes of the rare ones here. Beach Patrol. Pretty hard vehicle to find actually. It took me a while to get that one. There's also, if you're wondering, and hey, how come there isn't one with white hubs there? Well, that's because it was released in 1984. This is the 1983 lineup of real riders only, and in 84, many of these vehicles were carried forward with slight variations, such as the wheel hub color. BMW M1, really nice casting. And, of course, the Bronco 4x4 with white back cap. And a very rare variation with the black back cap. Mind you, in my opinion, the prices I've seen these black cap versions sell for, sometimes upwards of $150 versus $30 for the white cap. Why, people? Why don't you just put take a black cap off of a cheap mainline Bronco and stick it on this one? Nobody's going to be able to prove it otherwise, even if it's in the packaging, the way people can remove blisters and reattach them. So, maybe it was a lot more rare back in the day. As far as actual variations, but it's basically irrelevant now. So I would never spend that kind of money for that vehicle. And okay, rant over. We got the Byway Man here. This is the no toolbox version. There is a toolbox version. Oh, what? Why are you over here? Sorry, we already covered Byway Man. So there's the two versions there: toolbox, no toolbox, toolbox, no toolbox. And uh, I'm losing my mind clearly. In case you hadn't wondered already. It is the AM people, so anyways, <laughs> we've got all those wonderful trucks. The white hub versions are worth more than the gray hub versions. They're harder to find and probably around $45 to $50 versus the gray hubs around $25 to $30. And I do not remember at this point which ones as far as toolbox are harder to find. So moving down the line, Cadillac Seville with real riders. The 427 Cobra, beautiful casting with an opening hood and metal chrome engine underneath there. Very nicely detailed vehicle. The Formula Fever, I believe that's what this one is. Yes, Formula Fever, white rim or gray rim, both pretty common vehicles. Mercedes 380 SEL. Beautiful casting. Turbo Streak. Jeep Scrambler. Variation here is a gray paint job. I have a very satiny gray paint job versus the silver metallic. Just consulted my records. Yes, the gray one is worth about twice what the silver version is. So I paid about $35 for the gray one, about $15 for the silver. Jeep CJ7 with tan interior. Might be out there with real riders and one of these other interiors, but I'm not sure. I don't have, I don't have one. Not not uh, outside of the realm of possibilities, though. In in that case, it would be the rare one if you do find one with black interior and real riders. Um, Dodge D50, now featuring real riders and still the high raker base. So you'll see a lot of these are from the main line. They just put real riders on them. 928, the Porsche 928 Turbo. Race bait 308, based on a Ferrari, of course. The 63 split window Corvette. Two variations here. The white hub version worth substantially more than the gray version. I think that one can sell for anywhere two to three hundred dollars, amazingly enough. Quite amazing, actually. The Street Rodder. That's a tough little car to find with straight axles. 
in any case, let alone real riders. Turbo Streak, three variations here. Oh, which one is the hard one to find? I don't remember. But you'll see this one does not have Elf behind the back or behind the front wheel, whereas this one has Elf. This one has no Elf. I'm still looking for the version with white hubs that has Elf on it. I imagine it is the hardest to find because I've been unable to locate one. Super Scraper, based on the Byway Man casting. Henry's Hauling, it says on the side. We've got toolbox and no toolbox versions of the gray hub one, anyways. The white hub, again, is the harder vehicle to find, worth around $75 to $100. Do, I don't have one with the uh, toolboxes, so that must be the toughest one to find. And these ones here are worth about $60 each. Moving on into probably by far one of the most interesting series of 1983. Speed Machines. This was a total flop in 1983. Never to be released again. This is the only year that Speed Machines were produced. And I don't even think they were produced for an entire year. They were sold at discount dollar stores and in the discount toy aisle. They were basically a cheapened down version of the regular mainline cars. With basic or no tampos on them. Plastic bases quite often. Most of the vehicles came with a plastic base, making them cheaper than their metal base counterparts. And small castings, not most desirable in some cases. Well, that's not true anymore. Because Hot Wheels are so collectible and so popular, this has turned into one of the hardest and most expensive collections you can try to assemble to this day. And values on these vehicles continues to skyrocket especially for very rare variations. We're going to start backwards here with one such variation, the Z-Wiz casting, based on a Datsun 240Z. The common, and I use that with quotations here, version has an orange tampo on the hood and roof, whereas the uncommon version has a red tampo. This first version here can run you $75 easily in mint loose. This one here, I think I spent about $250 for this car. It does not come up very often. Next we've got the Vet Van. I believe this is a high raker chassis. It is. This vehicle here, I didn't spend too much. I spent about $45 for this one, but it was one of the last speed machines I could find. It was so hard to get one in good condition. Next up is the Vagabomb. Paid about $75 for this version. One of the more expensive vehicles in the lineup with the opening chassis and metal base. They countered that by not putting any tampos at all on it. Also true for the turbo wedge. There's some variations of this one which are noteworthy. A very cheap car with a high raker chassis. The fin has been removed on it to make it even cheaper. And I've got two other, ver well, well no, I have a duplicate in package and a very rare variation here with the clear window kind of tough to see through that blister pack but that one has a clear window only ever seen that once randomly when I was buying up a whole bunch of these from a collector that was liquidating on eBay and paid about twenty dollars for it so pretty good to have a very rare variation speed machine to complete the series next we've got the T totaler with basically the same tempo as it's always had just now featuring a very lightweight yellow plastic base instead of the chrome plastic base that it normally came with. That one's worth about $30, $40. Top Eliminator, another funny car with the opening chassis. No paint job or tampos. About $60 for that one. Stay there. And the Super Van. I'm reaching here. This one is a highly sought after piece by collectors. A lot of people collect the super van in itself just as a casting. And this one is tough. I spent $160 on that one. And about the same to have another one in the package, surprisingly. Just to go to show you that the packaging is still the lesser item when it comes to the collections. In my opinion. The spoiler sport. Two variations here. 
yeah, two variations. Okay, the common one here has a black plastic base. Mine is not mint, but it's in pretty good shape. Those are worth about $30 to $40. These have the single window on the back. You may remember from the old days, this casting had a split window. This very uncommon version has a blue plastic base. Very rare. Worth about $75, if you can find one. Oh, there's the kitty. And what do we got here? Second Wind. A hard car to find. Great on the racetrack, if you would dare to use it. I'm going to have to deal with this cat. Back to the task at hand. Speed Machines. Space Spacer Racer, I believe this one's called chintz down a little bit, black plastic base instead of the chrome base. Not a very expensive one, but kind of tough to find that one. Worth about $30 to $40. Then we've got the Rock Buster, worth about $20. Show Haas 2, based on a Ford Mustang funny car. I only have one in the package here. Quite an expensive piece to find. Probably worth about $100 to $120. Poison Pinto, another very expensive one. That one cost me $150. And yeah, that's a rare one. The Pack and Pacer, cool little casting, worth about $25. The Mustang Stalker, another expensive one, worth about $50. Lowdown, $75. Inside Story, well, I've got a bit of a story for the Inside Story got several two variations here one has a white interior a very rare version has a chrome interior kind of hard to see but that one has a chrome interior worth about seventy dollars the chrome interior and about fifteen dollars the white interior and we got the hair splitter with the opening hood and metal or plastic engine in this case normally this car the main line had a metal base but of course this one has a plastic one about twenty five dollars for that one dumping a Two variations here. I believe the chrome engine and grill version is the harder to find of the two. Worth anywhere between $20 and $40 for each of those. Bubble Gunner. Three variations of this. Very hard vehicle to find. Most common has black gas tanks and plastic base. Less common, actually probably one of the hardest ones to find, has a kind of a burgundy plastic base red engine but the nicest looking one of the bunch has a black base and a chrome engine that one cost me about a hundred dollars and this one here with the tan base or burgundy base about seventy five dollars about thirty for the black base and finishing off this series with the American Victory worth about fifteen dollars so I hope that's everything and more that you want to know about speed machines but obviously if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment now we're going to move on to the mainline vehicles, which I have still on the wall, and that's where we're going to go view them. As you can see, this is a complete collection because I have very few spaces left to fill. You'll notice a few spaces as we go through 1983 here, but that's where I've pulled vehicles to put them on the table from, like various series such as the workhorses and whatnot. I'm not necessarily missing any of these cars, actually. I've got the 31 Doozy. And that would have been in the Classics lineup. It came with a roof. This one's missing its roof. I think that's the harder variation to find with the pale burgundy body versus the dark burgundy body on the former vehicle. We've got the 35 Classic Caddy. There is a variation I'm missing that has black wall wheels instead of the white walls. I've never seen one, so probably an easy wheel swap to do if I really wanted one, but that goes against my code. And we've got the 40s two-door, 57 Chevy Hot Ones chrome base. One is the red enamel paint, and the other is metallic red. Now all these cars in the main line are worth anywhere between $10 and $40, so I'll really only identify prices on the more expensive versions, such as this 67 Camaro with the opening hood and 
two variations. This is a base variation, Hong Kong and Malaysia. The Hong Kong base is slightly easier to find than the Malaysia base. Those cars are worth anywhere between $35 and $40 a car. The 80s Corvette with opening hood, really cool casting. As you can see there, it's got a nice little metal engine. This one has silver metallic paint. The rare version has flat gray, or not flat, but just a nice gray enamel paint job. Quite a bit harder to find than the silver metallic version. Probably worth around $20. And we've got the 80s Firebird. Plastic base. One of my favorite castings, the 82 Toyota Supra. All metal. With rare for the time period and a main line. Really good tampa work on it. Toy as a license plate. Those are available with Hong Kong or Malaysia base. 83 was when Hot Wheels started making their cars not only in Hong Kong but Malaysia as well. So you'll have a lot of variations there. And I do have all the variations, Malaysia and Hong Kong. But I chose at one point only to display the Hong Kong and Malaysia base variation where there was a price difference. If there's no price difference, I've just put the counterpart into storage. Lots of storage. Back down to the cars. There's that 427 Classic Cobra with opening hood. The Baja Breaker. So these will be familiar because you just saw them in the Real Rider lineup. And the, uh, what is this? Auburn Boat Tail Speedster. But what do they call it? Auburn 852, I believe. White wall or black walls. And then we've got Beach Patrol with basic wheels. Camaro Z28. Same variation as we saw with the 80s Corvette. You've got the gray enamel and silver metallic. Gray enamel, very hard to find. These have metal bases. The gray enamel is worth around $35 to $40. Oh, this one's going to get me. I don't know what this one's called. And of course it doesn't say. Cannonade. This one is the Cannonade. It has an opening. Well, the cockpit does open, revealing the chrome interior. Cool little car. Pretty hard find, one to find, actually, with that paint job. The Chevy Citation X11 with Hot One Wheels. One of my favorite little castings of the time period. This is a beauty. The 34 Packard. Really heavy casting. Worth around $15. One of my favorite castings, actually. And the 75 Corvette Stingray with metallic red paint. We just saw that one the year prior in 82 with red enamel paint. So if you have that variation, they're so close together as it turns out, just the way the display is, that I might as well take you a year back. Datsun 200SX, another one of my favorite castings. I got a lot of favorite castings. Don't ask what my favorite casting is. Opening hood, very heavy car, big metal engine, plastic bumpers. That's a cool one. The Firebird Funny Car. Two variations here. One has the hood tampo and headlights. The other one does not. And no, they have not just been wiped off. That's a, a known variation for that car. The flat out 442. All metal. The Ford X Escort XR3. This is a tough little car to find. Really good details. Transparent headlights, plastic bumpers, metal base. One of my favorites again. Probably very right at the very top as far as favorites because my family used to have one of these back in the day. That one's quite expensive too, worth about $30 to $40. Not so for the Formula Fever, pretty common one. But still tough to find with these basic wheels. Correct me actually, I'm, I'm correcting myself. This was a tough one to find. I think I spent about five or ten dollars for it, but it took me a long time to get one with the basic wheels. Much more common with the real riders that we saw. 
And here's a Canada only, I believe, or international anyways. I'm not sure the United States got this one. The Jaguar XJS. Metallic brown paint. Metal base. Beautiful casting. And this one has gone up in price a lot over the past few years. Expect to pay anywhere between $50 to $70 for that one casting. Mini Trek. It says good time camper on it, but that is the Mini Trek. Two variations. Common one has a black metal base. Uncommon one has that brown metallic base. Or, yeah, it's a very light metallic, but it is metallic. That one's worth about $50 versus $10. Murata Stalker. That's a cool car. Whoa, just about dropped it. Nice little roll cage in there. Really fast with those gold Hot One wheels on it. And the Mountain Dew Stalker. Two variations here. One has a more olive drab green in the tampo versus the bright green in this tampo based on a Buick Regal. What I don't have in this collection of Mountain Dew Stalkers is the one that actually says Mountain Dew Stalker on the base. That one is worth a ton of money. These ones say Racing Stalker which makes them worth substantially less, but still about $30 a vehicle versus I've seen the racing or the Mountain Dew Stalker sell for upwards of $100 and it doesn't come up very often. Uh, Science Friction. This is a rare little car. It took me a while to find another one in good condition. This one's a little beat up. Missing one of its lasers on the front. A few chips, but still got those delicate chrome exhaust pipes. It's a tough car to find. I got one in the package somewhere. I think that one cost me about 40 bucks. Uh, this one. Neat streeter. Tough little car to find as well. Still has the same tampo it's had since the 1970s. Ford oldie but a goodie. About 30 bucks for that. Omni 024. Two variations. The blue one is quite tough to find actually. Hong Kong base on that one. And I think that one's about $30. This one's also pretty tough to find. The most common one to find is the silver version from 1982. Back to 1983. This version here, also about $30. Neat little red taillights on them. And the Ramblin' Wrecker. That's a popular vehicle as well for collectors. Just drop that one too. Worth about 30 bucks. The Pontiac J2000. Two variations here. One has the big sunroof versus the narrow sunroof. Narrow sunroof is more hard to find than the big sunroof. I think it's worth about 40 bucks, and this one's worth about 20 bucks. The Peugeot 505. Also a difficult little car to find. Worth about $25. Has metal headlights. And this one, the Royal Flash, based on a Lotus. Orange metallic paint. Kind of hard to find that one as well. Super scraper with basic wheels. Pretty easy to get that one, but still worth about $20 to $25. Tricar X8. Stutz Blackhawk. This time with metallic brown paint. Turbo Streak. And there again is the Elf Tampo variations. And no Elf Tampo variation. Also, this one has Michelin. That one does not. The Corvette Fever. Vetti Funny, they call this one. Opening chassis. Worth about 20 bucks. And this one's going to get me too. I can't remember what it's called. It doesn't say. The ones I don't remember don't say. The Turismo. This is a very hard variation to find though. The common version of these paint variations, as it was seen before with red paint, this one has the purple plastic interior and bumpers. Whereas this one has the carryover from the year before or is it the year after? I don't remember. Hmm. Might be the year after. Anyways, black interior. No, it was the year before. Okay. 
Uh, black interior, black bumpers. Extremely rare variation. I only paid about $30 for it, but good luck finding one. They're nearly impossible. Number one, because nobody knows what they're called. There's nothing on the base. And number two, it's kind of a forgettable casting based loosely on a DeLorean, DMC DeLorean, such as in Back to the Future. That wraps up the main line. So now we're going to take a look at some interesting international release vehicles. My knowledge on these is a bit sketchy, but I'll tell you what I know. Feel free to help me out in the comments with where these are from. I do have all the information on my computer, but um, I don't want to look up each and every vehicle here. So I've got this one here. It's not in English, the packaging. Pretty sure it's uh, either from Mexico or, oh no, we've got new model written there. Oh, it does have English. Might be from Mexico, might be from Italy, I can't remember. One or the other. But that's the Ford Escort that you saw on the wall loose from the main line. The difference here is that this one has an orange tampo with the XR3, whereas this one has a gold tampo for XR3. Other than that, oh, it's going to tell me right on the base where it's from, isn't it? France. Wrong on both fronts. Okay, well, I should know French. I do live in Canada, but I don't, so sorry about that. Royal Flash, also from France. I remember this one. Basically the same casting from years prior, but with uh, a tan interior. And I've got another one on the wall here, but it's a little bit beat up. American Victory from France as well. These are all released in 83, so far as I know. I've got the Alive 55, or 55 Alive. This one does not have the opening hood because that was phased out years ago. Pricey little piece though, I think I paid about 50 bucks for that one. The Sand Drifter. This is a cool little one. The Renault. Renault what? Renault Le Car. That's a tough little piece to find here in Canada anyways. Pretty common in France, as is the Chevy Citation X11 with black interior. These ones are quite pricey as well. I really like the Cadillac Seville casting, so I went for them all. Black wall wheels, big black wall wheels, I might add. Bigger than the normal North American release. And real riders on this one. Silver paint job. This is the most expensive one because it has the Masters of the Universe tampo on it. That one's worth about $100. And the airport security car. I paid about $150 for this one. I decided around this time that I was not going to actively pursue collecting international releases because I started to learn that there's just so many out there. So I really only bought a few and then stopped. These are the Mexican release from the Thrill Drivers track set. Extremely hard to find. Slight different tampo than the North American version. The Lowdown. Made in Mexico. Very expensive set of cars. I paid about $300 for those two. And the Abarth 2000. I think this is a Renault. Nope, a Fiat. Fiat Abarth. Nice little model. France release. Got the hair splitter. France as well. And this one is from India, I believe. Yep. India. That's in 200SX. Kind of a funky, uh, funked out window there on the front. That wraps up my international selection. Below is 1984. And the next time you see the Hot Wheels of the Vintage, that's what you'll be looking at. It's the 1984 selection of vehicles. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're out hunting these, happy hunting.